My name is Dana Sikola and I'm the Executive Director of the 410 Project Community Art Space. Alrighty, I'm Joe Herkey. I am the President of the Board of Directors at the Mankato Makerspace. I'm Russ Rocliffe. I'm a board member with the Carnegie Art Center Mankato Area Arts Council. The main mission of the 410 Project is to provide arts and arts programming to not just Mankato, but all of Southern Minnesota, and to focus on creating arts experiences that are based around uh, inclusivity, uh, experimentation, and advocacy. The main mission is to provide a community workspace for entrepreneurs, hobbyists, uh, makers, to have a place to work, a uh, place to gain knowledge, and to connect with others. Our mission is to allow artists and creatives to show their work, sell their work in our galleries and our gift shop. We also have 10 studios that artists are still using. And also we're in a big historic building. We have to maintain that building. And that's one of our, one of our major things. The 410 project has been affected by COVID in several different ways. Uh, we were forced to shut down uh, in the spring of 2020. So it was really hard. We had to shut down our programming and our exhibitions as well as our um, different forms of support. And we, we had a lot of people asking, you know, when are you reopening up? When are we starting exhibitions and all of our resources that we normally would offer that we weren't really able to offer during COVID. Uh, and it got to the point this fall where we had to make you know, the honest decision to open up slowly or almost to completely shut down. Um, without that programming and exhibitions like we normally are, we're not making as much income uh, and funds to pay our overhead, to pay our rent, to pay our lights. So we're struggling for funding right now. A lot of our volunteers that have been with us for a really long time don't have the accessibility to volunteer anymore in this space. So we're limited for staffing, keeping the gallery open, keeping our resources going. We knew it was important to put forth the effort to reopen um, to really start supporting our, our visual artists. Um, it's still really hard because there's a lot of una um, and unanswered questions, but um, yeah, we're, we're trying to stay here and we're trying to stay supportive for our creative communities. It has been very difficult. We were shut down during the statewide uh, stay-at-home order. Since then, we've been slowly reopening. So we originally opened up to essential workers, so people that were actually creating things for people, more like contractors. Um, from there, we opened up just to our members. Um, and then we've recently started doing classes this summer, and we're slowly working towards having some small events um, like our Makers Markets. One of the largest ones that's been affected is events. We're not able to have any large events uh, because our space, while it is a large uh, workspace, is divided into smaller rooms. So you can only have so many people in so many areas. Um, our classes were affected for about six months where we weren't able to host any. We are now hosting those again, but limiting how many people can be in those classes and how many classes can be hosted at the same time. Before the shutdown began, we were actually like at the point where like this is sustainable. We had two years under our belt um, and things were looking really good. We're actually able to have a rainy day fund, which really came in handy uh, during the shutdown. And so we saw the need that the community has for this space, uh, whether that's just for a class or to work on their own projects or just to get together with friends, whether that be a party, a fundraiser, um, or a maker's market? Uh, we've been closed since March. Our, our uh, workforce is a volunteer, volunteer workforce, many of whom are in the uh, at-risk group. So when our volunteers uh, expressed a reluctance to do hours, then we decided that we just closed down for the time being. Okay. We prefer not to take the risk for our volunteers. Mm -hmm. Have you talked at all about like timing of reopening maybe? It's up in the air right now. I mean, we, we obviously don't see anything before the holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, then we'll be discussing that more. Mm -hmm. 
Right now, what we're really asking from our greater Mankato community or southern Minnesota community is to be present. Um, I know not everyone has the accessibility to come into the space um, to view exhibitions or to purchase artwork, uh, and we know that, but I want people, if they're able to, to remember, you know, we're open, come down into the space, activate with the art and the artists that are here. Also, follow us online, you know, push things through social media, push our resources. If you know someone that maybe isn't familiar with the space, so let's say, you know, advocacy is a huge thing for us here. We only grow as our audience grows. And so if you can't be here present within the space uh, and being active, we ask that you can advocate for us as well. Ways that you can support the Mankato Maker Space is to either sign up for a membership and then we have a membership drive coming up soon. You can go to MankatoMakerspace.org on our support page and there's ways that you can donate physically or monetarily. Uh, the community can support the Carnegie Art Center by uh, maintaining their memberships. Uh, donations are always welcome uh, and just support the arts and the community. Yeah, so. Right now I think when it comes to arts and culture and what that looks like in Minnesota, we're at a little bit of a scary point. You know, our arts organizations are having a hard time staying open, our theaters, um, you know, music venues are really struggling right now, and I really think we need people to be aware of that. I think, you know, the, the community of Mankato maybe doesn't understand, you know, how this is really impacting the deeper culture of arts in our state. And so we need people to step forward and to support financially and to support, again, with advocacy and um, also re remembering to get out and vote. We need people at the threshold. Um, that are going to stand up for keeping funding in the state for arts and culture. And, you know, there's lots of ways that, you know, we can support. Um, and I think, again, we need to reach out to our arts organization and artists as well um, and just let them know you're here or purchasing something uh, from an artist, pur purchasing music online as well or purchasing a book or something literary from a poet or local writer and, um, and just being mindful of those choices of support. So there's many ways that you can support uh, the art community in Mankato, uh, whether that be through organizations, uh, nonprofits, or artists themselves. Because there's not a lot of, lot of large events going on, there's pop-ups that are happening all the time, or smaller openings that are available. Um, so I would encourage you to see what is out there, um, whether that's here at the Mankato Makerspace, down at the 410 Project, or any other nonprofit or organization that's helping artists. The community can support the arts by continuing to support organizations in their different hours and uh, different ways they're struggling with the, with the pandemic and uh, by local art. So.